it's a pleasure to be here to present uh, our work at Tokenomics 2020. Uh, so uh, I'm Gabriele Costa, I'm assistant professor at uh, IMT School for Advanced Studies in Lucca in Italy. And I'm going to present you our work uh, about the security of, uh, let's say, the security, the um, uh, implementation of a reliable and fair bug bounty program uh, uh, support system that we are carrying out with uh, uh, my colleagues, Andrea Canidio and uh, Letterio Galletta. So let's start from the problem. The problem is that uh, open source is almost everywhere nowadays. Uh, well, in general, code is everywhere, but open source in particular is a very uh, interesting subset of all the code that is outside the world. Uh, we use a lot of open source uh, tools like web browsers or entire operating systems like uh, Linux or Android. And also, and perhaps more interesting, uh, open source is typically part of uh, larger software that might also be commercial or proprietary software. And uh, another interesting thing is that many security critical utilities uh, are also open software. Uh, open source software. The reason is that uh, it is very important to be able to verify the implementation of these systems that are so relevant for so many applications. So all in all, the problem here is that the vulnerabilities in open source software uh, are very dangerous because these can affect uh, a lot of systems and may affect the, the life of citizens. And uh, one might think that uh, verifying uh, um, open source software can be easier because we have access to the source code, but code verification is not such a simple matter. So code verification is hard in general, even when we have the source code. Uh, for this reason, we had in the last year, many uh, parties starting bug bounty programs. So the idea behind the bug bounty program is that a certain authority or a certain actor offers bounties. Uh, uh, that means they, they give you a reward if you can find some bugs or errors uh, in a piece of code. Uh, the idea is that there are bounty hunters, which are uh, ethical hackers or security experts that spend their time in investigating these vulnerabilities. Uh, they can even federate in large groups of ethical hackers and eventually they disclose these vulnerabilities uh, in order to acquire the bounty that have been uh, the bounties that have been promised by the bounty issuer. Uh, an interesting application of this scenario uh, as is also the EU FOSA project that has been also extended to EU uh, FOSA 2, that is a bug bounty program for third parties application. So in this project, the European Union uh, acknowledged uh, that there are several open source uh, projects that are very critical for the European community. And they offered uh, rewards for people that could find bugs in these uh, uh, very critical software. And uh, that, that's exactly an example of a bug bounty program that is open. So we are used uh, to think that the bounty issuer is somehow the owner of the code, but when we are referring to open source code, uh, even third parties might be interested in, in uh, paying a reward for finding bugs. And this is a very interesting market, uh, a growing market, but uh, we have a problem here. Uh, the problem is that we have two markets. We have, let's say a white market, that is the bug bounty market, and we also have the zero day exploit market that is what we might call the black market so zero day exploit can be sold uh, on the deep web and there are people that uh, can buy these so you can offer not a vulnerability so you you have found uh, um, an error in the code but a way to exploit this error to attack someone or to to attack a, pl a platform uh the, the problem here is that uh, if you can turn your bug into an exploit, uh, the value of your information increases significantly. Just to make a concrete example for Google Chrome, if you check on the official bug bounty program, you can uh, aim for $5,000 rewards in, in the best case. But the very same vulnerability that you uh, convert into an exploit uh, is uh, uh, $300,000 worth. So much more, much more than the original value. You might think that 
when you have a vulnerability, it is complex or unusual to turn this into an exploit. But actually, this is not what happens because many bounty issuers, before paying for a vulnerability, also require for the bounty hunter an evidence of a bug. And the evidence is typically an exploit. So it's very common that when you find a vulnerability, you also need to create an exploit to, uh, to prove that the vulnerability is actually there. Also, when you disclose a vulnerability, sometimes you, you have to perform an extra effort because they might ask you to develop a remediation plan. While when you provide an exploit, you sell an exploit on the black market, nobody asks you to, to, to fix the bug. And the very last issue, but in our opinion, uh, a very important issue, is that bug eligibility is decided by the anti bounty issuer after the bug is disclosed, which uh, gives the bounty hunter very limited bargaining power when they disclose the bug. Because uh, we apply for a bug bounty, we provide all the information, and then eventually the bounty issuer says, no, this bug is not eligible, but they already have all the information to replicate and fix the bug. And uh, all of these reasons make the bug bounty market uh, quite inefficient in general, in, in our opinion. And we also have uh, uh, several evidence, uh, evidences confirming this, this problem. So the problem here is that uh, there is no fair information trading. As I said, uh, we, we know that this market suffers from an old up problem and we want to avoid this. Uh, the first thing that we have to do is to introduce uh, symmetry in the information exchange pro um, protocol. And there is a, a paper by Orner and Skripatz uh, describing how to implement this fair, fair trading uh, system by means of a sequence of tests. Tests uh, are executed to uh, somehow checking uh, the validity of the information that the bounty uh, hunter, in this case, uh, is going to sell. And if these test, uh, tests are passed, uh, this means that the information has a, a fair amount uh, of quality, let's say, it is, uh, is good enough to be, to be sold, uh, and the bounty issuer uh, can actually decide to pay. The problem of this uh, solution is that there is a total lack of commitment by the two parts. So the bounty issuer and the bounty hunter are untrusted, might even be anonymous, and they don't trust each other, and they might retreat from the protocol without completing it. So trying to get the money without revealing the information, trying to selling uh, fake information, and uh, trying to acquire information without paying for that. Uh, so to avoid this problem, we investigate the possibility of, of applying the blockchain by means of smart contracts. So the idea is that uh, we want to implement a mechanism for uh, ensuring the commitment of the two parts to smart contracts that are public, verifiable, and cannot be removed from the blockchain. So uh, they provide a commitment uh, by, by the one of the two parts. Uh, and for the initial disclosure, I will show you something uh, more detailed later on. Uh, we will use the same approach for the script parts. So this is our protocol that we are implementing in Verios. So we have these two parties, the bounty issuer and, they and the bounty hunter, and they communicate through smart contracts on the blockchain. So the bounty issuer is some party that publishes a smart contract defining uh, what kind of bugs they are interested in uh, and what kind of rewards they plan to, to pay for that. Then we have bounty hunters that look for bugs and when they find something, they can claim the bounty. Uh, when this happens, we start uh, what we call the bounty claim protocol that is at the very core of our, of our proposal. And I'm going to tell you something more in detail about this. The bounty claim protocol is basically a non-chain fair exchange protocol between the bounty issuer and the bounty hunter. Uh, the bounty hunter starts by sharing uh, what we call a trace commitment which is an initial description of a failure state that the bounty hunter could uh, obtain through a certain execution. Uh, this information is not enough to replicate uh, the, the execution, but is enough for the bounty issuer to evaluate whether, whether this is interesting from the point of view of the bug bounty program. 
So this means that the bounty issuer can check the eligibility of this bug and decide whether or not to start the protocol. So the bounty issuer is authorized to retreat from the protocol at this point. Eh? But in this case, the bounty hunter preserves the information and do not, uh, does not share it with anyone. So can sell it uh, somewhere else. Um, and then uh, bounty issuer and bounty hunter can even negotiate some protocol parameters that are not very relevant for the execution, uh, but we are also investigating as part of our future work, and we'll tell you something more. Uh, about, for instance, the partial reward computation method. But let's see the protocol in more in detail. So we have the initial commitment uh, that is sent by the bounty hunter to the bounty issuer, so from right to left, uh, to the blockchain. Then uh, eligibility is computed, uh, and the main part of the protocol is inside this loop. Uh, and this loop implements uh, a, challenge, uh, a challenge response protocol for information disclosure. So the very core is this part of the protocol that I'm discussing more in detail now. First of all, I need to provide you with some information about uh, what a program trace is uh, and what we mean by commitment. Uh, so a program trace is a sequence of program states uh, that starts from initial state of a program, typically the state where we pass the uh, inputs for the program. And uh, roughly speaking, each state in the, in the trace uh, is just a finite mapping between variables and values. So we might have, as in this example, that variable X uh, is assigned to 42, while variable Y is assigned to true, and so on and so forth. Uh, the important thing is that an execution trace uniquely identifies a, a single execution of a program and can be used to repeat that execution. So this is an evidence that something went wrong. Um, in particular, it is an evidence if the last state is a faulty state, like the, the very common segmentation fault uh, uh, error that we might have while running a program. But this might be anything. So the final state uh, shows, highlights the vulnerability, but uh, just by looking at the final state, we don't know what was the input for running this program. So our commitment in this case is important because we must make sure that the bounty hunter uh, cannot change the trace during the protocol. So as in this picture taken from Ghostbusters, uh, uh, the, the bounty issuer must show uh, the, the trace is not changing. Uh, so the card is displayed clearly and cannot be modified. Uh, but eventually, we also need to do the commitment. Commitment, the commitment uh, means uh, providing a cryptographic secure hash code uh, for the sequence of states. And the commitment means providing a state. And we can compare the hash code with the state, which is equivalent to showing a certain state of our trace and making a, a, a step farther in our session. I'm saying a, a further step and not a step forward, because what we are doing is executing this backward. The reason is that if we go forward, we start from the initial state. And the initial state has enough information to uh, replicate the bug uh, with no need for the entire trace. Instead, we go from the final state to the initial state. And this is our challenge response loop. So the idea is that the bounty, uh, we, we implement a proof of knowledge protocol uh, where the bounty hunter sells uh, a certain segment of the execution trace. Uh, the challenge is published uh, um, on the smart contract uh, so that uh, on the blockchain to a smart contract so that uh, the execution of a contract can be invoked uh, by the bounty issuer. So the bounty hunter, to, to put it in a simple way, uh, publishes a contract saying, uh, if you can solve this challenge, uh, this means that you know the previous state uh, from which I could reach the next state in the sequence. So we go backward uh, from the final state, the error state, to the initial one. Uh, it is very important that the challenge is complex to be solved by someone that doesn't know an actual trace. Uh, so we need an NPR problem to be encoded in, in the smart contract. And we have uh, a, a good candidate uh, in the form of the satisfiability modulo theory formulas. And the way to generate satisfiability modulo theory formulas from uh, uh, a program uh, code is through backward symbolic execution. So to put it simply, 
what we do is starting from a certain point in the program and uh, as the bounty issuer, computing some constraints about the previous state, uh, few steps before, few instructions before, and asking the bounty issuer, if you really know a trace, uh, you know a valid assignment of variables that satisfies this formula. And if you don't know this assignment, uh, you have to compute it right now, and it will take a lot of time. So you can't solve this challenge in a reasonable amount of time. So let me make an example, because this technique might be, it's a bit technical. Uh, imagine we have this very simple program that is made by a single function called foo that takes a, a single variable called c, okay? Uh, C is a char, in C this means a small integer. Um, so the program just check whether this C is greater than zero and increase, in that case increases C by one, then creates another variable called D that is where we store the C plus one again, and then eventually we compute X as 42 over D. So imagine that this is our open source pro um, open source project and someone tells us, uh, a bounty hunter tells us, I found the division by zero in this program, okay? So although this program is very simple, it is not immediate to find the value of C that leads to an execution where D is equal to zero. But if we are interested in finding division by zero, this is exactly what we need to say, okay, I want to pay for this, provide me with a trace. So let's see how to compute a challenge. We do backward symbolic execution, which means uh, let us assume we want D to be equal to zero, right? So right before doing this division 42 over D, we want D to be equal to zero. But at the previous statement, we have that D is equal to C plus one, which means that if we move one step above, we have that C plus one must be equal to zero. Now we have a condition. Well, for condition, we have more complex rules that make the formula increase in size. And what we have is this disjunction where we say that either C is greater than zero and C plus two is equal to zero, or C is uh, uh, less or equal to zero and C plus one is equal to zero. And this is our challenge. So what we put on the blockchain is this expression. And we say, I'm ready to pay if you can show me a value of C that satisfies this formula, which is part of a, of a trace. This is just a single step. And uh, this is done in a certain amount of, of time. So you can take all the time that you want. This is a very simple example, but you might find that this is not so trivial. And if the bounty, issue, bounty hunter can uh, exhibit a value that satisfies this formula, then the um, smart contract automatically pays for that. So we cannot retreat from the protocol after publishing the challenge. And in this case, uh, um, let's say an honest uh, bounty hunter might show that a possible value is 254, okay? So to conclude my talk, uh, Verios is aiming uh, at uh, implementing a fair and reliable market uh, for bug bounty programs, also open because on the blockchain, everyone can publish uh, uh, bounties. So we can even implement uh, in this way, AMED campaigns for finding certain families of bugs. Uh, we are also implementing the contracts in Solidity. Some of the contracts are already uh, available and we still have to, to do some, uh, some uh, uh, work. In particular, we are studying equilibria for partial reward, which is not trivial because it depends on the characteristic of the execution trace, because we don't want to reveal too much information during the computation to avoid the bounty hunter to uh, leak uh, information that the bounty issue might use to retreat from the protocol without paying. So there should be an equilibrium between these two uh, operations. Uh, we are also evaluating alternatives for the challenge response uh, implementation, and in particular for computing uh, the challenges with other techniques. And uh, we are also um, considering the possibility to uh, make a formal verification of this protocol that in, in our opinion uh, is very important to prove that, uh, that the protocol is secure in general. So, and uh, that's everything on my side.
So thank you very much.